Welcome to the Week in Italian Startup, where we discuss the latest highlights happening in the Italian tech and investment ecosystem. Let's start maybe with uh, what's happening in the, in the fundraise space, uh, and then we're going to talk about M&A, uh, as, you, as you mentioned. So let's start with the biggest round of the week of last week, starting from Zerint, uh, industrial IoT startup raising 5.3 million in a round led by United Ventures. Uh, I thought it was particularly interesting. It's not a small round at all for an IoT um, device. Uh, I really like the idea of kind of retrofitting all the equipment. I think there is an angle to that. And uh, it's a very interesting deal. And of course, the backing of United definitely confirms a lot of, uh, a lot of good, good signals. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, well, man, you know that you know, on IoT and industrial IoT, I'm a bit uh, on, on the bullish side. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm happy to see that there are other investors investing in the market. And I believe that um, Italy and Europe in general, we have something to say uh, in this market. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Italy is the second biggest manufacturer in continental Europe, I believe. So we have a lot of uh, job shops, but there are machineries mm -hmm. running. And I can see why there is a good solution to try to connect and um virtualize all of these, all of these, uh, potential customers. So nice play. Uh, there are huge yeah. competitors out there, but, um, um you know, some yeah. Sara out of, you know, just out of mine, but, um, interesting. yeah, very interesting play. I thought it so was, uh, it was very so. cool because yeah, I mean the, and the, the good, the good thing of these kind of plays is literally like the, the, the simplicity of use, which I thought was particularly like a uh, direct. Uh, basically adding a device uh, really transform completely the machinery and that's extremely powerful I feel agreed interesting awesome let's uh, um, let's talk about maybe next round uh, synergy flow energy transition startup raising 1.8 million in a seed round led by 360 capital so last week we had the two of them some of the major funds in Italy kind of moving uh, their bets, 360 and United. So 360 betting on green energy and circular energy. And uh, uh, I was doing some research on the kind of technology that they were developing, which I didn't know. It's uh, the redox flow battery. I don't know how, how much you know about that. It's, uh, it's a very, very interesting concept. Uh, essentially, what happened is that uh, two different flows are rubbed together through different... So as, essentially, they're liquids that they rub through together on a membrane and the rubbing generates electricity. And uh, uh, it's very interesting because uh, it's, a, it's a very unique way of uh, manufacturing electricity. And uh, the idea is to use low cost uh, liquids and materials to actually, you know, trigger all the circular part of the, of the economy right there. Very interesting. Nice. Awesome. So uh, I thought it was a, it was a cool deal also because uh, um, 360 is uh, b basically like really endorsing uh, everything that is happening in the circularity uh, and I and together with 360 we have CDP venture capital and uh, um, and basically a lot of uh, angel investors also like believing in the in that kind of space. Yeah, also the, there's the Polytechnic of Milan involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can tell because the investor is actually the Poly360 fund uh, managed by 360 Capital, and that's a specific technology transfer fund aimed at technology coming out of the Polytechnic of Milan. Um, so this is really technology coming out of our university. So very nice. Beautiful. Um, nice. Yep. Awesome. Uh, let's talk about also DDC, biotech startup raising 1.5 million in a round led by Utopia, Utopia SIS. So I thought it was really cool because it's a, another example on how exactly university spin-off can really uh, help out the ecosystem. In this case, this is, this is a spin-off from the University of Turin, if I'm not uh, wrong. And basically, they are uh, working toward the uh, research and cure of uh, breast cancer and leukemia, I believe. So uh, this is a very nice way to actually uh, trigger like new uh, technological uh, advancement through the collaboration between VC, early VC, I would say, and university, which 
in Italy is really common. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen like incredible, uh, you know, uh, projects coming out, but there is a lot of being like, uh, uh, being started uh, in the past. And I'm sure something, something good is going to happen for sure. Well, the, the good signal is that this is the second, uh, basically startup coming out of research in universities, either officially <laughs> or unofficially, but again, uh, it's a signal that we, we, we have researchers and professors who are starting to uh, bring the research to market. So if this mm -hmm, single mm -hmm. data points become a trend, well, that's good yeah. news for the future uh, because awesome. we have a strong, uh, university network. So it's very nice to see things yeah. happening. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Cool. Let's talk about the big elephant in the room. And literally when I say elephant, I'm really referring to, <laughs> to the actual log of the company. So bending That's spoon a nice acquiring one. ever. Yes, I know. Thanks, Nick. I didn't, I just thought about it on the spot. So, you know, I feel really cool now. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, bending spoon acquiring Evernote, the good old Evernote. I mean, I remember when it came out early 2000. And it was very cool because it was one of the first company that kind of uh, tried to bridge this like uh, sync problem of people that they were trying to, you know, take notes on their computers and then like uh, sort of not being able to use it on different device. This thing was like groundbreaking and uh, the story is insane. Uh, it's developed by people that you basically worked on um, handwriting recognition in, uh, in, in Microsoft. And then from there, essentially, they, they developed the first like uh, note taking platform. And then, the, and then from there, basically, it started scaling. I thought it was particularly cool. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm sure I have, I still have my subscription, like my free subscription somewhere and ever not. But, uh, but it was really cool. Yeah, me too. Really cool. Me too. Nice, me too. Nice. Are you still using yes, it? Yes. And uh, no, not really. I moved on uh, to mm -hmm. the new generation mm -hmm. of collaboration of taking apps. No shown in my mm -hmm. case. Uh, yeah, same. Uh, but I mean, uh, I, I've got sweet memories of Evernote because it, it actually worked. So multi-platform. Totally, totally. Uh, not taking, you know, it was yeah. good. Uh, so let's talk about, um, yeah, uh, what I was curious yeah, about. Well, I was curious pace, about... Right? Sorry, Nick, I lost you for a second. Okay, no, but I was saying that they, they, they couldn't keep pace with, you know, the new ways of collaboration tools and uh, Web 2.0 uh, champions coming after them. And from the article, it was, it, was a, it was a unicorn in 2013, it seems. Yes. Wow. And uh, my question is like, uh, why now is Bending Spoon interested into, into Evernote? So uh, I was researching a little bit the kind of user base, which is still like active right now is pretty, it's huge. It's essentially 250 million active users still. So that's a, that's a huge one. And I'm sure there is a, like a strong angle for which anything that Bending Spoon is doing, they're trying to sort of, of course, acquire exposure to new user. And that's one of the greatest way to actually immediately turn on the faucet and uh, be shown in front of people. So I thought it was, uh, it was really cool and, uh, and really well executed for sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, I wonder if, uh, they also have plans for the product or is it just a, you know, an acquisition of a customer base with which they want to, they want yeah. to double down and, you know, share the portfolio of products. That would be interesting Good to point. see their plan planning out yeah. basically. Do you think there, uh, there is a connection between the latest raise in September and that from a bending spoon and, uh, this move, I mean, it's, it's very close. It's kind of, it's kind of, I mean, I don't want to do obvious connections, but I mean, I cannot help but think about it. <laughs> it looks an easy way to connect the dots, right? Uh, company raises money, company acquires, uh, Big target, eh, so, sort of sounds about right. Exactly. Uh, I wonder exactly. how how much they paid for Evernote actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because uh, I think this, in a sense it is disclosed. It's it's not uh, it's not public yet, right? I didn't find no, anything. No, I mm -hmm. didn't find anything. No, me neither. Uh, yeah. 
What it was really cool is that um, going back to the previous round uh, and to the people that participated besides banks, uh, in case of São Paulo and, uh, and DTM, uh, it was basically creator funds, basically uh, managed by uh, one uh, and only carry trainer. And uh, if you if you research a little bit about carry trainer, his former CEO, I mean, I think he's, yeah, he was for a PRC of SoundCloud. And it used to be before that board of director of uh, Fender Guitars. And uh, I mean, sound totally like a super cool dude that is like pushing uh, creator economy uh, on, on a different level. So after gaining massive experience in the sector, now he's like uh, kind of financing some of the best deals. And uh, of course, you have celebrities in the round, um, uh, Ryan Reynolds with, uh, with his holding company and so on. And um, I, what I thought is that uh, um, essentially um, Benning Spoon is really trying to bank on uh, whatever is going to be the creator economy. So not only through basically mobile app doing uh, audio editing or, or photo editing using AI and so on and so forth. Uh, this is just an additional element that they want to add to their own portfolio. So I thought it was, uh, was very, very strategic then under that light. Yeah, I agree with you. So the, the, there is a theme uh, uncovering in the uh, Spoons about his approach to, so to developing very easy, effective, functional apps for the for the single creator in the creator economy. So yeah, uh, you're spot on, probably. So we will see, we'll see probably the portfolio expanding exactly at the services into with this thesis on the line. It would be, be nice. cool to act. Yeah, it would be cool, as you say, to see how, what we're going to do, what they are going to do with the user experience, because if, uh, I mean, they're master in UX and simplicity, maybe mm. that's the time when they're going to revive uh, and make Evernote, uh, you know, more minimal and more like easier to use and so on and so forth. So that's, uh, that can be a very powerful reboot for, for, yeah, for, uh, the... for Evernote. It might not be... Yeah be easy, but when you start from the customer base of 250 million people, yeah. as you said, that's a huge number, even if you're able to reconvert back a few million. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah totally. That's, that's a nice result. I agree. I agree. All right. Awesome. Let's talk about Stellantis, a little bit of uh, M&A slash corporate VC. Um, so Stellantis acquired AI Motive, an autonomous driving startup. So uh, autonomous driving is there, is, is in the automotive industry now and nobody can, you know, avoid the problem. So uh, that's, that's a further move where Stellantis is really like trying to uh, see what, what they can do with by acquiring actually talent. In, uh, in the AI and, autom and uh, autonomous driving uh, ecosystem. That's the idea. Mm -mm -mm. So the interesting thing is that not all the uh, car manufacturers are uh, continuing, con uh, are doubling down on autonomous mm -hmm. driving, right? So I think mm -hmm. there, there was Ford probably that right, brought down the investment in AI uh, driving. So the, the, there are different decisions right now in the market. So some, Interesting. some, some are lowering the, their investment or, you know, pulling out altogether. And uh, other Stellantis are, you know, starting now, basically, so are investing heavily right now. So that's interesting. Uh, interesting. Interesting. I, I tend to think that, you know, um, when the game becomes tough, tough players start to play and then mm -hmm. maybe uh, this is a good time to start to, 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 to invest in a double down on that market. And I was reading, mm -hmm. uh, actually Musk tweeted probably mm -hmm. this morning about the general availability of the autopilot to the Tesla customers who actually paid for it for the, uh, for the service. And that's another interesting data point. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Well, me... That's uh, it sounded. Yeah, it will. I mean, that's the direction actually. Uh, autonomous driving will be an upsell on any like uh, connected car and uh, you can decide whether to have it or not, or to have it more or less accurate in some form, which we probably don't even imagine. And uh, yeah, I mean, cars are becoming smartphones really. <sighs> Yeah, there, there, there it is. Nine hours ago, this, this morning, a Tesla full, full self-driving self beta is now available to anyone in North America who requests it mm -hmm. from the car screen, assuming you have bought this option. Wow, that's, that's full cool. self-driving. GA. 
China yeah. availability. Wow, that's impressive. Know, it's that's like, impressive. Yeah, that's impressive because most most commentators thought that we were years away from that. Mm -hmm. no, it's definitely, mm -hmm. definitely there. It's definitely there, and uh, yeah, we'll see how we how it's gonna play out in the complexity mm -hmm. of life. We'll see. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And in in the pressure of competitors. Yes, 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 totally. Right. Um, let's also talk about the new funds happening, which is not uh, like a small news, actually, like um, single investors are managing to raise early stage funds. Uh, that's that's a great news, I think. And because in, in more than, you know, 50 episodes that me and you we did in the past year, we, we barely, you know, touched on new uh, sort of VC put, pulling together capital for early stage. And uh, I thought that was uh, that was particularly good, and uh, we we know some of the people that actually launched the funds. The first one is uh, Stefano Bernardi with Unruly Capital, uh, raising uh, I believe 18 million. Uh, very interesting thesis also because it's really going after the long shots uh, in a, in a, in a, in different ecosystems in different verticals, and uh, he really managed to um, get a lot of. Uh, very interesting, like family offices uh, working with him. And uh, I mean, he has a great track record of, uh, you know, working with Silicon Valley startups, working with Silicon Valley investors. And uh, I mean, he has a huge portfolio of company he has worked with. So I thought it was, uh, it was very, very significant news. So kudos to, to the guy. Yep, I totally agree. And Stefan is a friend. I've been knowing him for, you know, a decade or more right now. Uh, and he has a huge talent and I'm really happy that he finally decided to launch his fund. So <laughs> just doing angel investing uh, all across the world. Uh, so very, very nice. And it is an example, this is an example of a solo GP. So one of those mm -hmm. new trends mm -hmm. going on when you are strong, determined, with a clear vision. And, you know, in a, in a mo it probably also in the moment where automation and tools are, you know, there to help mm -hmm. you. You can yeah, think about totally, coaching, totally. coaching a fund by yourself. Totally, as, totally. As a GP, at least. Uh, yeah, that's very yeah. interesting. And I believe the same Absolutely. can be said for Michele Padovani. Think, yeah. I'm not sure. But I was reading I a little bit. Um, again. Exactly. I mean, uh, also Michele Padovani launching uh, another project, Bonsai Venture, 12 million pre seed investment holding company. So it's in the form of a holding company, uh, backed by, again, like family office from uh, Northern Italy. Uh, what is interesting, I thought it was, yeah, first of all, that it comes from uh, banking and private equity. And so it's really changing and focusing on, on a, kind of zooming in a, a different asset class, uh, leveraging his expertise on different words. And I thought it was really cool. Um, what he's doing is also playing mostly on in seed. So uh, basically, um, basically uh, giving tickets from 300, three, well, 100 to like 400,000 uh, just to start. So the seed phase. And what I really, I mean, I thought it was really cool is that um, uh, he has a dynamic where he's going to also involve a uh, very well-known Italian entrepreneur and investors in his own uh, ecosystem of the such of Eco Pandian and Tommaso Migliore that we interviewed the other uh, a few a few episodes back. So he's like really trying to build like a strong network so that, you know, portfolio companies can really benefit. And I thought it was it's really powerful. It's a really powerful way of doing, uh, of doing this year, I thought. Yeah, I agree. In that phase, for sure, it's even, even more important because you really invest just tiny amounts of money, well, relatively tiny amounts yeah. of money. And, but if you bring in yeah. that amount of knowledge, uh, you, yeah. you, you, you produce a lot of leverage on the, yeah. the small yeah. amount of money. So very nice, very nice yeah. play, very cool. Totally, totally. Right, Nick, any last words? Uh, no, not really. Uh, other than uh, we, uh, there, there, were, there were at least a couple of uh, articles uh, in the press, in the, in the international press about Italy, one about specifically Milan, uh, one about the Italian market uh, at large. So we, we got a lot of interest. Well, a lot of, much more interest than, you know, last year. <laughs> Yeah, what's yeah, going yeah, on yeah. In, uh, in, in our market. And that's, I think it's good. 
uh, mm -hmm. let's raise the awareness, awareness bar. So uh, yeah. uh, we really need totally. to, to become present on the radar. And this is, you know, good news. I mean, some storytelling totally. about it. Are we going to hit the 2 billion? This year? We need another satisfaction. We need another satisfaction <laughs> in the next five, five weeks. Five weeks, oh, even less. less, even less than five weeks. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Not impossible, impossible, but not impossible. Not impossible. Who, who yeah, we look like be? we're tracking. So, yeah, the, ah, the question point. is, who might Very that be? Who might that be? Yeah, 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 yeah. Who might that be? Casavo, but just, they just raised. So just is here. Yeah, exactly. Who's in exactly. that ballpark? Oh. All right. We'll see. Awesome. Keep we'll an see. eye open for news. So. Exactly. Nick, thank you so much for joining and I'll see you everyone next week. Thank you, Jack. Ciao everybody, see you in a week.